So in the previous video, we started looking at how we can actually split a data frame apart, and we see the artifact of that over here in our terminal. Uh, here on our next step, what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to take this to the next step in our split apply combine uh, sort of design pattern. And this is actually a relatively common design pattern, not only here in pandas where it's built into one single method, this group by method, uh, but in uh, data cleaning or data munging uh, or data analytics in general. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out the output that we had before. I've gotten rid of that print statement as well. I've also uh, imported a NumPy function. And in this video, I'm going to talk mostly about the aggregate, but after we have grouped our data frame into some subgroups based on uh, one column, as you saw in the previous example, we could do multiple columns, and what we would end up with is groups that are some sort of Cartesian product uh, where we could have multiple columns that we're grouping by. Um, say we could group both by a combination of uh, state and cities if we had uh, some geographical data that had state and city each in a different column. So maybe all of the cities, uh, Springfield, Ohio, and Springfield, Illinois would not be grouped together. Um, and we could also avoid having to group all of the cities in Illinois together and group all of our entries for a uh, each of the unique city-state combinations if we did more than one uh, column. But here we're dealing with this simple example here where we're only grouping. Um, I do have that object grouped animals uh, saved there. So I'm going to start by uh, referencing grouped animals and there are a number of aggregate functions built into pandas and a lot of them are things that you might expect. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and give myself a print statement here just so we can sort of run through some of these that we would expect. Um, if I do dot sum and I go over and I run this, um, I am actually not given... Oh, uh, I'm not dealing with numerical data here. So um, it doesn't really make much sense to do a sum. So in this case, let's actually go back into this data frame and let's go ahead and see if we can't just uh, make up some uh, toy data. Um, we're gonna do a list and we're gonna say it's age although um, that doesn't make very much sense, but that's okay. Uh, 56, 57, uh, 13, uh, 25, 67, and 41. So now I have you know this additional column that I've added age. Now I do have some actual numerical data, so it's gonna make a little bit more sense. Let me go ahead and save this. We'll see what happens over here, see if it gives me my values. And I can see now that it did go ahead and give me an average, or excuse me, the sum of the ages uh, for all of my different types. In this case, only two different types, dinosaur and mammal. Um, as you might expect, um, I could do, there are some built-in things like mean, right? I can save that. Um, the average or the mean age of my dinosaurs or my mammals. Um, some other common ones, I could look at my standard deviation. That's going to be helpful in some exploratory data analysis. Um, if I'm looking through, right, I could look at uh, my variance. I could even go with uh, describe which some of you might be familiar with from a uh, statistics package in SciPy. But um, if I run this without describe, right, I'm actually given a plethora of data. I'm given the mean, the standard deviation, uh, the min max, and um, the three quartiles. So essentially the five number summary for each of these two uh, groups in the age category. So 
in essence here, right, we, we can do these aggregate calculations where it takes all of the members of each of the individual groups and then uh, makes some sort of calculation uh, from those. And uh, most of the common ones that you might want to use, you're going to find are built in. And you can find a list of those in the Pandas documentation. But there is also an ability to use your own functions to uh, aggregate. Now, I haven't come up with uh, anything particularly special that I want to do here, but I did just want to show an example where you can uh, potentially have your own function that might take in some sort of iterable and um, make a calculation based on that iterable and return some value. But uh, as a placeholder, one of those that I know is np.mean. Uh, and I have imported numpy as np. So if I go ahead and do that uh, aggregation and uh, use uh, animals.grouped.group.by.aggregate, and then I notice that when I use np.mean here, when I use this function, this is not like when we typically invoke a function or a method and we have the nth empty parentheses, right? We're actually passing this function in as a parameter to the dot aggregate method. And because we are passing, uh, we don't want to invoke this function right here. We want to pass it in as a parameter. And because of that, we do not have the parentheses following it. Um, but it looks like I am missing a parentheses on the end here. I'll go ahead and save this. We'll clear our output and I'll execute this file. And we can see that we get the mean again. Uh, the same values that we got using the dot mean that's built into pandas. Um, but this is just an example that you could use any function uh, that you wrote, that you might write or may want to write um, or have previously written if one of the built-in functions, one of the built-in aggregate functions uh, doesn't fit what you need to accomplish uh, with pandas. So that covers the aggregate uh, option that we have. The other two options that we have to do uh, are that we can either filter or transform. Uh, in the next video, we're actually going to take a little sidebar and talk about Lambda functions in Python because they're very powerful and really useful for us to actually uh, do our filtering or do our transformations uh, in this dot group by method on a pandas data frame. So, and then after that, we'll go ahead and talk about how we can um, apply that dot filter or dot or transform um, to our grouped data frame. Um, the last thing that is worth mentioning here, right, is that when we either call dot aggregate or we uh, use one of the built-in aggregate functions like dot sum, dot mean, et cetera, um, right? We are actually using, we are taking care of both of the apply and the combine steps of split, apply, combine. That is, we are applying a function to each of the groups, and then we are combining the result of that function back into a data frame, which is returned. And we can see that over here, um, where I have now type as my index and age as my single column uh, that is represented numerically in this new data frame that is printed. That's it for this lesson. I will see you in the next video.